Call be lifted. Without objection. Madam President, once again this week, Republicans are bringing forward a proposal to provide additional coronavirus relief to help protect jobs, to get kids and teachers back in the classroom safely, and to provide funding for the treatments and vaccines we need to defeat this virus. And once again, Democrats are objecting. It's the same old song, Republicans' bill doesn't spend enough. Well, let's talk about that for a minute, Madam President. First of all, Republicans are not claiming that the bill that we put on the floor this week contains the last dollars that we'll need to spend in response to the coronavirus. We may need to spend more. This bill is simply an attempt to direct relief funds to some of the biggest priorities right now, like helping the hardest hit small businesses weather this crisis and providing more resources for testing, treatment, and vaccines. These are areas, Madam President, that we should all agree on. Second of all, Democrats' coronavirus proposal, the $3 trillion bill that they proposed, is both unrealistic and irresponsible. Our nation is deeply, deeply in debt right now. Next year, our country will owe more than we produce for the first time since the end of World War II. That's a very bad place to be. That's getting toward the kind of debt-to-GDP ratio that helped bring about financial disaster in Greece. And while the United States is not Greece, if we grow our debt enough, what happened to the Greek economy could happen here. Being the United States of America does not exempt us from financial realities. Now, in times of crisis, sometimes you have to borrow money. And that's what we had to do earlier this year with the CARES Act and other coronavirus relief legislation. But, Madam President, we have an absolute responsibility to every American, to every hardworking individual in this country, to ensure that we are only borrowing what is absolutely necessary. And Democrats' proposal doesn't even come close to meeting the definition of necessary spending. To give you just one example, Democrats have proposed appropriating a staggering $1 trillion for states, even though the states still, still, Madam President, haven't spent the money that we provided for them in the original CARES Act. Now, it's certainly possible that at some point we will have to provide some kind of additional assistance to states. But to create a trillion-dollar slush fund for states before they've even spent the money they've already been given would be an incredibly irresponsible use of taxpayer dollars. And at least some of that money could be used for coronavirus relief. Other money in, Demo in the Democrats' bill would go to measures that have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the virus. Things like diversity studies in the cannabis industry, a soil health study, federalizing elections, tax cuts for millionaires in states like New York and California. Madam, one of the biggest priorities in the wake of the coronavirus is helping Americans keep their jobs or find new ones. It should be front and center in any relief bill. Yet Democrats' massive bill, over $3 trillion in the Democrats' bill, manages to mention the word cannabis more often than the word job. Diversity studies for marijuana, more important, evidently, than jobs, at least if you, could, if you look at the Democrats' bill. And, Madam President, that should tell you all that you need to know about the seriousness of the Democrats' proposal. Now, I would love for the Democrat leader to come down to the floor and explain how a bill that mentions the word cannabis more often than the word job is a serious coronavirus bill. Of course, despite the unseriousness of the Democrats' proposal, Republicans have been willing to compromise on a coronavirus bill from the very beginning. We understand how negotiation works. And we knew that we would have to give some ground and that Democrats would have to give some ground. And we were and are willing to do just that. But from the beginning, 
Democrats have rejected serious negotiation. Sure, they sent, sat in meetings and they talked about a bill, but at the end of the day, Democrats refused to compromise. It was their bill or no bill. Which means, Madam President, that so far they have chosen no bill. The only way to get a bill through the Senate into the President's desk is to develop a compromise bill. Even if the majority leader put Democrats' exact bill on the floor today, there is no way, no way, Madam President, that it would make it through the Senate, much less be signed into law by the President. So if the Democrats really want a bill, they're going to have to compromise. And that is something that they continue to refuse to do. Which leads to the logical conclusion that Democrats don't want a bill at all. If Democrats really wanted to get relief to Americans, they would work with Republicans to pass a compromise bill. Even if it didn't contain all the money that Democrats want. Because even if it were true that the Republican legislation is inadequate, some money is better than no money. If you can't get someone in need all the money that you think they should have, you should get them what money you can. If Democrats really thought it was of overwhelming importance that we deliver relief to Americans right now, they would be working with Republicans to get as much relief as they could through Congress. But for Democrats, delivering relief to Americans is not really of overwhelming importance. What is of overwhelming importance to Democrats is keeping coronavirus alive as a political issue. And if that means no bill, well, then Democrats are okay with that. They'd rather have no bill, zero funding, and a political weapon than have a bill and allow Republicans to say that we helped Americans. And so all indications are that when we have a vote later today that they plan to filibuster this bill. And that's not the first time that we've seen this. Think back to the end of June. In the wake of George Floyd's death at the knee of a police officer, Americans of all parties came together to push for police reform. Republicans put a police reform bill on the floor of the Senate for debate and amendment, a substantial bill that included 75 to 80 percent of what both Democrats and Republicans said they wanted. The product of years of research and work by Senator Tim Scott, who has personal experience on this issue. And Democrats? Well, Democrats filibustered. That's right. In the face of a nationwide call for police reform legislation, Democrats refused to even move forward to debate the legislation. Why? Because agreeing to work with Republicans on legislation that it would have taken away much of Democrats' ability to exploit police reform as a political issue. And so Democrats filibustered. Even though, remarkably, Madam President, they were offered by Senator Scott and other supporters of the bill numerous amendments, 10 amendments, 20 amendment votes, opportunities to improve the bill, or at least improve the bill in their eyes, into a form that they could pass it. Well, it's hard not to wonder if some of the violence that we've seen in our cities across the country in recent months could have been avoided if Democrats had not decided to attempt to exploit this issue for political gain. Madam President, there's not a lot, of Repub not, not a lot I should say, Republicans can do if Democrats intend to keep prioritizing perceived political advantage over doing their jobs as legislators. But we're going to take this vote on the coronavirus relief bill this week, today. And we're going to keep offering opportunities for Democrats to work with Republicans to help the American people. And maybe, maybe, Madam President, some of the Democrat rank and file will decide that they've had enough of their leaders playing politics and will work with us to resolve and to get some things done for the American people. 
Madam President, Republicans are ready to negotiate. We just need Democrats to come to the table. Madam President, I yield the floor and I suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander.